Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. In this video we are going to take a look on modeling offsets on Autodesk Robot. So to start with I'm going to select my 3D building design and I'm going to define me a very simple steel frame just to prove the point. So I just apply me a steel frame like this, draw it basically. Of course, I'm assuming that you know how to draw frames. If you don't, please refer to the video about simple beams linked above. So I'm just drawing you some columns and drawing you some beams. I'm accepting the default section because that's not what I want to talk about. Now my frame is going to be fixed on both points. So just fix those two guys. And I'm going to apply me a dead load case, which means there is self weight now. And I'll apply me a dead load, for example, 10 kN meter on that bar. Well, everything seems to be fine, and I'll apply me for good measure some loads in the X axis. So I go to node load, apply me here 5 kN in the positive X axis on this point, apply. So yeah, everything seems to be fine if I run the analysis now. Now this is something that everybody knows how to analyze in structural analysis 1 or 2. So if you click on the deflection shape, you can see that the frame deflects exactly as I'm expecting. It deflects in its plane. There is no out-of-plane deflections because there is no out-of-plane forces. The beam deflects exactly as expected. The columns deflect in a double curvature setting. Of course, the entire frame deflects to the right because there is a force applied going to the right. So yeah, everything seems to be in order. If I go now to my results diagrams from members, hit the FX button, I see my axial forces on the FX. And the axial forces on the columns are the reactions for the beams. And the axial forces on the beams are because the column is indeterminate. Of course, I can open my FY force and you will not see anything because there is no force in Y. So in the local Y axis, there is no shear forces in the local Y axis. So that's why you see a zero here. If you go to FZ, you will basically see the shear force diagram, the usual one. If you go to MX, the torsional moment, you see nothing. If you go to MY, you see the bending moment diagram, which is absolutely normal. And if you go to FZ, you see nothing because there is no force in Y, which means there is no sideways moment applied on the beams. All right, fantastic. Everything seems to be fine. Now, what is offset? To explain that, I need to remind you that Autodesk Robot connects the members by its center. So you see that the center of the cross-section for the beam connects at the center of the cross-section of the column. Now, this is not always the case in real life. Sometimes there are some offsets. Sometimes the, those centers are not connected center to center. So how can I do that? Well, Autodesk Robot gives you a tool called Additional Attributes Offsets just to do that. There are two predefined uh, offsets for Autodesk Robot. For example, you can click on Law Flange, hit on that, and you can see now that my beam is connected to the column, not by its own center, but by the center of its lower flange in the beginning and in the end. If you click on upper flange and select this again, you can see that my beam is now connected to the column via its upper flange. Now, of course, the question is, I mean, this seems to look nice and dandy, but are there consequences for this? And the answer is yes, there are consequences to that. Before we get to those consequences, allow me to show you how you implement define an offset on how you delete the offset. So if you have an offset that is defined and you want to use it, you basically click on the beam and apply the selection. If you want to delete an offset, you basically hit on delete and apply a delete and then the offset is away. If you want to define an offset, you can click on new offset definition and then you can call it, for example, my offset if you want to have a custom offset. Now, when you define an offset, you need to define how much the beam is shifted along its axis. And this shifting is measured in the local beam directions. This beam, for example, has the y-axis to be in this direction, the green one, the blue x, and the z red. So everything I'm applying here is going to be applied in the local direction. So for example, if you click on your y and say 100 in the beginning and 100 in the end, and add that, for example, and click on that, you can see that it got shifted 100 and 100 on each side. A very important issue to mention is that those 100s are related to the center of the beam. Now, you can actually shift not to the center of the beam, but relative to the flange, for example. So if you click on that now, you can see that my 100, 100 was shifted relative to my upper flange. You can shift it relative to the side of your beam, and you can see that this is exactly what's happening. 
B100 and 100 got shifted by the side of the beam. So yeah, you can shift anything anywhere. And I will now, for the sake of demonstration, shift my section relative to the center of the section. And I'm going to shift it 200 millimeters, so 20 centimeters, in the local y direction. How is robot understanding this? Robot is understanding now that this beam is connected to this column not by its center, but by its distance here. In the finite element code behind Autodesk Robot's GUI, what ends up happening is robot connects this member with this column by a beam that has an infinite stiffness because I will later show you exactly how this is modeled. But for now, I will use Autodesk Robot's systems. If you close this, the offset, of course, disappears. And you might think that you have never offsetted this. No, you have offsetted this to enable the display of offset. And you can simply go to display. And by the way, you can basically click VV to open the display too. Enable offset, and you have your offset enabled. Now, if you run your analysis, you will notice things will start to change. First of all, the analysis takes a little bit more time. And second of all, if you open your diagrams, you will see different values. And I will explain them in a moment. So let's go to Diagrams for Members and hit the FX button. Axial forces. There might be some changes because of the offset. The FY has nothing because there are no forces in FY. And the FZ is as usual. There are some little differences because of the entire offsetting thing. But what really gets affected is the moments of that structure and the deflection shape of that structure. Because when you offset something, you are basically applying a moment arm to a force, so all the moments will be affected. For example, there was no MX, there was no torsion before, suddenly your beam and your column has torsions. Now this seems to be odd. But that's the case. Now those torsion values are small. I can actually show you them by basically going to my units and formats and increasing the number of decimal places. Of course, this is a separate video of setting your decimal places. Feel free to check out robot to do that. So you can see that there is some torsion here. But why is there a torsion? And what is the source of this torsion? The reason why there is torsion and the source of this torsion is basically the axial force in the column. Because now, the axial force in the column has an eccentricity or a moment arm towards my beam. So the axial force of the column coupled with the distributed force on the beam and this distance create a torsion because a force multiplied by a distance gives you a torsion. That's not everything. Remember how MZ was zero? Uh, suddenly you have MZ. And the reason why you suddenly have MZ is because this load that is applied on the beam has a moment arm to the column, meaning that the forces of the beam now apply a moment around the local z-axis of the column, as you can see if I enable my z-axis. You see the z-axis? My forces now, because of the eccentricity, they apply a moment around the z-axis. So yes, offsets do affect our analysis. Let's keep this frame here for comparison reasons. I will basically make a copy out of this frame for comparison reasons. So I have multiple frames that are carbon copies of each other. Now, I want this to be my baseline frame. So I basically, for this one, I will, first of all, not have any offsets, just for comparison reasons. I will make this my baseline. So now, uh, of course, robot asks me or warns me that there are separate structures. I'll accept that because I intentionally have done that. Now, if you open the FX force, you can see that there are no differences axial compression of all the members even if there is an offset and I will show you the offset if you hit on FY you can see that there is no difference FZ there might be some differences and you can see that it's, the difference is extremely minimal uh, it's 41 instead of 41.15 if you go to MX now now this is where things change you see on the baseline frame there was no there was absolutely no MX however for reasons I've just explained there is a torsion on the beam and on the column. MY is not really affected, it's just minimally, minimally affected. But MZ suddenly is created because here there was no eccentricity of the force on the column, so there was no MZ, but when we have offsets, suddenly we have MZ. So yes, and it's not, it's not small. The MZ for this offset is actually 8.7 kilonewtons per meter. So this is not, not really ignorable. So, I want to discuss different times of producing this offset. 
So the first thing is basically to apply an offset using the Autodesk robot's offset command. A second possibility is to offset the load alone without offsetting the member itself. This is another option of offsetting stuff. So first of all, I will take those two frames and remove the offset. And yeah, it went back to its original self. And uh, before I continue, I also wanted to check the uh, deflection shape. So I just click on deflection shape and look at this. Look at the difference between the offsetted and the non-offsetted frames. Now, if you, if you analyze the non-offsetted frames, you have an in-plane deflection that is as expected. You have a double curvature action on the column, a single curvature action on the beam, and double curvature action on the column where this entire frame is shifted to the right because there is a force to the right in X. Now, it's totally different when you go to the offsetted frame. You see, suddenly, you, if you look on the front, you have a similar frame action. But if you go to the side, suddenly things change. The first thing that changes is the column is also bent around the z-axis because this force that is offsetted from the column will bend the column according to its offset. The second thing is that even the beam is not only deflecting downwards like the other friends. I mean, look at this. This one is deflecting downwards. The beam is not only deflecting downwards, it's deflecting downwards and it's deflecting sideways. It's deflecting sideways due to the fact that, and this is really technical and I need you to focus now, if you hit on top view, you see the shear force in the column actually causes a bending moment on the beam. I will repeat again, the shear force and even the horizontal force here, you see the horizontal force here, the horizontal force and the horizontal shear force on the column actually produces a moment around the z-axis for the beam which causes this bending action on the beam. If you want to see it, allow me to show you this for you. So I will just go to results and open my MY for you, uh, MZ sorry. And you can see that there is an MZ and the reason why there is an MZ is because, is because the shear at the end of the column is what causes the moment in the z direction or around the z direction okay fantastic it seems to make sense so let's take a look on the different options of mimicking this offset so i'll just toggle my offset on and you can see this is offset this is not now i want to mimic my offset here so to do that i'll basically first of all delete the load that i have here this one okay so this frame now has no load now i can actually apply a force that is offset it i'll basically go to my member loads select the load now, the offset, you can here say loads on eccentricity. <clears throat> so if you click on loads on eccentricity, you can, you can actually offset your load. You can basically say 200 millimeters here, and now your load is offset. And if you apply that, you see that your load suddenly is offset. So let's run the analysis and take a look on the difference. So my analysis is complete, and I want to see my deflection shape. So let's do that very quickly. All right, so deflection shape. Now you see the offsetting of forces had an effect on the bending of the columns. The columns in both offsetted forces and offset members seem to bend similarly. However, it didn't really affect the bending of my beam. You can see that in the offset beam, there is a clear bending in the beam, whereas here, there is no clear bending. You see that my beam has absolutely zero FZ because my beam was not offset the load was offset and uh, the column still is affected by the load offset it's similar but not exactly the same because the beam was not offset and, and the only thing that was offset is the load so this is another option of offsetting stuff if the load is offset not the member then it stands to reason to offset the load if the member is offset then it stands to reason to offset the member and of course those are not exactly equal but there are some similarities the final option is uh, that I want to produce the offset myself. So I want to show you the finite element theory behind robot offsetting this member. Now this is extremely technical and I don't expect you to follow me on this one. And I'm going to make me a copy in the y-axis and drag it. So it's going to be 0 in x, 0 0.2 in y, and 0 in z. And I hope it works. Fantastic, it has worked. So I've produced my copy. And I'm going to delete the original beam. Now, just to check, I think this load was on the node, not on the bar. 
Yeah, exactly, because I want to reproduce it, so I don't need this one now. I delete this node. Now, if I do this, this will not be accurate, but I will calculate it and show you how I can make it become accurate. So if you run the analysis now, everything seems to be fine, and it's separate structures with no problem. If you click the deflection shape now, you see that there is some similarity between what I have done and what actually the robot is doing with its displacement. I mean, if you look on the front, you can see a similar behavior. If you click on top, you can see a similar behavior, but it's not really one-to-one -one behavior. The reason why this is similar but not one-to-one -one is because of the stiffness of this little element. I have drawn an element here, and this element has a, little st has a stiffness. Whereas robot uses an almost infinity stiffness, almost infinity stiffness, to model this element. I am using a regular element with a normal stiffness. Robot uses an infinite stiffness member. Now, for the technical guys among you, you actually, mathematically speaking, cannot use, a stiffness, cannot use an element that has infinite stiffness because it would cause problems in your stiffness matrix inversion systems. So what robot does here is actually applies a member that has extremely high stiffnesses. And I'm going to make this member now become extremely high in stiffness. So I just click on this member. And I will now choose me a section that is an extremely big section the biggest of the white flanges, just to show you, and apply this to my selection. Now, of course, this is ridiculous now. Those are ridiculously strong. But I just want to show you that the more stiffness you get in those elements, the more it converges to robot's uh, offset. You can see that it gets uh, closer and closer to the behavior of the offset structure. So if you click on uh, MZ, for example, and hit the Apply button with the parameters, you see that the values are actually getting closer. 8.7 in comparison to 8.70. What I'm trying to say here is that the trick that robot uses when it's offsetting elements is basically it connects them with a small element that has infinite stiffness. And I've just shown you that. I've applied an element myself. It's not infinite stiffness, I know, but I used a big element. And you can see that my results are really converging to the results of robot. There are differences, I know, but I just wanted to show you the theory behind offsetting. Okay, so this is what I wanted to cover when talking about offsets in Autodesk Robot, and I will be using this, I will be using what we covered in this video to improve on the hanger model that we have done before. If you haven't seen that video, there is a video link showing up, please click on that and consider watching that video. And before I finish, a shout out to our dear subscriber, Nia Sapai, who requested this video. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope that this video was beneficial for you and that you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing. Especially subscribing. It helps a lot. This is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we will catch you in the next video.